disaster at a mining site in the Talensi district of the Upper East region that resulted in the death of some 16 illegal miners. The Lands and Natural Resources Minister and his deputy are flying to the disaster zone to get first-hand information as to why these Galamseyas defied directives to undertake the operations that led to the untimely death of the 16. The small-scale mining sector in Ghana is central to the country's success story in the global gold production rankings. According to the Natural Resources Governance Institute, the sector in 2018 alone contributed some 2.3 billion Ghana cities, representing 5% of government's revenue. The sector, as of December 2016, according to the institute, shows the small-scale mining sector alone employed an estimated 1 million miners, with artisanal small-scale mining contributing 31% of total gold production in Ghana. The small-scale mining sector also produced 174,439 carats of diamond, representing 100% of total diamond production in the country in the year under review. Steven Mantiao, the former PIAC boss, does not only blame the president for the seeming failure in the fight against illegal mining. As far as he's concerned, vested interests and weak supervision among political appointees and institutions taxed with the mandate of eliminating the illegality are partly to blame. I happen to have joined an international panel that reviewed uh, Ghana's implementation of the natural resource and environmental governance program, which was financed largely by the World Bank over a 10-year period. And the final report found that over the 10-year period that we sank money into the natural resource sector aimed at eliminating illegality, particularly in the mining, forestry, and I think, which, which other one? And environmental sector. We, at the end of the project, these illegalities rather increased and according to the report this was largely on account of vested interest the very people who had the power and the mandate to weed out the illegality were themselves involved in the perpetration of this illegality and so the report describes that as vested interest and so until we deal with the vested interest, I do not think we'll go very far in eradicating the challenges that we have in the mining sector. So when I say failure, regulatory failure, it is the deliberate type of failure, not the involuntary type. And I, I think it would take a revolutionary leadership to really deal with this problem, not the kind of leadership that I've seen so far. It appears that political class ignored advice of experts and technocrats they hired to advise them. Technical advisor to the Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Dr. Ben Ayi, is key figure at the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry. It turned out the expert counsel he offered government was not considered favorably. People observe their colleagues, their peers doing well. They want to follow in their footsteps. So if we had got these legitimate ones, to succeed because they are doing the right things, encourage them to go up. Then it would be much easier to get others to say, why don't I also do that? And it would have helped our cause. That is water under the bridge. So for me, yes, I think we should get, the lesson for me is that we should get as much as possible, all stakeholders on board. Let them have their say. We don't need to accept everything that all stakeholders will say but listen them out 
and then from lessons that we pick, we could improve even what we put in place. So Mr. Ayi, I'm going to ask you what I think is a difficult question. So how crucial would you say was your input in government or the ministry? I know the ministry didn't act alone. Joining forces with the other ministries to, to come to the conclusion that this is the way to go when an advisor to the lands minister had this fine idea how crucial and significant were the ideas that you put on the plate during the deliberation stage of moving into full-scale ban on small-scale mining? That's not a difficult question to answer. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has always been the legal entity responsible for mining in the mining sector. And it has been the one managing up to 2016 when we hit a crisis situation. And government at cabinet level decided that it needed to take it in its stride to deal with the crisis situation. So at that point, yes, the ministry may have its views, the Minerals Commission may have its views, I personally might have my views, but all those views having been taken on board cabinet which is the ultimate decision maker in this respect deemed it appropriate to take the step that was taken he tells me the whole fight against illegal mining took off on a wrong foot prior to government's stepping up action in 2016 2017 the small scale miners some of them had already decided that illegal activities, inappropriate operations weren't good enough and they have constituted themselves into a task force. The, the Small Scale Miners Association had constituted a task force which was fighting illegal mining. Clearly there were lessons they learned which we could have benefited from. Um, unfortunately, like I said again, like the elephant in the room, government had a certain view that you couldn't, when the thing became a crisis, in 2016, you couldn't exactly distinguish between illegal miners and legal, legitimate and illegitimate. The operations were fairly similar. So government said, hey, freeze it all. Let's stop everything so that we have a clean state and we can sleep and we can start again. Now, having said that, maybe we should have paused a little bit to look at those small-scale miners who were on their own fighting the illegality probably would have given us lessons which would have gotten us off to a better start than we did. But because we left them out, some of them basically folded their arms and watched. Again, the difficult part of it is that because it became quite protracted, the, the ban or the, 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 morat, the moratorium, I don't like to call it a ban, the moratorium, uh, was that they who were legitimate did not clandestinely continue mining. Those who were really the target, a number of them continue mining notwithstanding the, the suspension. So those who were legitimate suffered the most because they didn't do anything. And a number of them lost their capital because of that. So now, come when we want to restart, a number of them are finding it really difficult to restart anything at all because they don't have the capital to start, which is something we could have avoided if we had kept them on board. Again, if the period had been shorter than it was, then it's possible that then one would have brought them along and then they will be there to do what I call the demonstration effect. Having identified the lack of deterrence in the mining law, President Ekufuado swore to end illegal mining and he got the legislature to reform the mining laws and made it more deterrent. Additional law, which I think is also of significance, but which perhaps has not come to your attention, and that, and, uh, that is the, the amendment of the mining law to provide for much stiffer sanctions and punishment for those involved in illegal mining. Um, they, it was brought to me yesterday for my assent, so it is now law. But the parliament has amended the mining law 
and um, heightened considerably the, the penalties for those engaged in illegal mining in so-called Ghanems. We're talking about minimum sentences of 15 years, um, maximum 25 years. We have increased the punishment for foreign, who, foreigners who intervene illegally in this industry. We've had to take away some of the discretion of the judges. <laughs> yeah, largely because, Madam, with the greatest of respect, they're, they're not cooperating on these matters. Yes, people are caught, flagrant acts, they're taken to court, granted bail. And then at the end of the day, they disappear, etc. A lot of these Chinese people who are caught, they've been brought to court, they're granted bail. We don't hear of them again, only to see, hear that they have resurfaced in the country. So we felt it was important to, <clears throat> to take away the discretion in the judges. It's unfortunate that that should be so, because we should, all of us should be able to trust the judges also to do their bit in, in stamping out uh, crime and its consequences in our society. But that doesn't turn out to be the case. So this is another important step that we've taken in this fight against Galapse. Tassel had government on one side and miners on the other. Unfortunately, there were certified miners among the illegal miners. Most of the certified miners had contracted loan facilities and invested heavily in their companies. Unfortunately, they stood and watched on helplessly as their investments came crashing as a result of the wholesale ban. If government saw the need to um, actively, I'm using the word actively, advisedly, but actively um, involve itself in the fight against Galamse would have been a natural partners with government. Government should have partners naturally. And then together, hand in hand, we nip the kanga in the bed. But that is not what happened. Instead, government said that it could not differentiate between the licensed more skilled miners and then the illegal miners, which was so difficult to understand because we obtain licenses from the government. Regulators like the Minerals Commission and EPA come to our site. We have boundaries with PLES and they come. The Minerals Commission officer, before you are granted a license, they come and inspect your corner PLES with their GPS and all that. So what does that mean that they cannot differentiate between um, licensed miners and illegal operators? That was neither here nor there. And so when we put all this together and members were banned from operating for close to two years, these are members, like I said, have contracted loans to work and everything just came to a standstill. No plan, nothing. But look, mining is science, and so you cannot just get up and stop work. There has to be a plan, plan of um, making sure that you are able to shut and shut well. But this thing was done abruptly. And so people lost their investment just like that. People lost their properties. Some even died as a result of the shock. And the local economy crashed. Um, some financial institutions also had their pinch and uh, um, the whole thing was just messy, no plan. Who would have thought that um, government could have um, 
approached us and asked us, how did you guys do it? And then perhaps advised and said, oh, look, the aesthetic view of our river bodies, the polluted ones as we see them, the people who are the real culprit are the dredges, the one we call to do do And so those people would have been our first target for the fight against Kalamse. So together with the state force, we go after these people, take them off our river bodies. Well, it appears the licensed small-scale miners who say they were handed a raw deal by government are harboring the pain and the thought of taking legal action against government is not off the table. As it stands now, you know, I'm, I was also affected as a small-scale miner. Um, the thought has actually dropped in mind. Um, I know there are a lot of consultations going on. But you see, the small-scale miner is not very sophisticated. And I'll explain the reason why I'm saying that. The small-scale miner is a patriotic citizen who wants to participate in the natural resources exploitation of this country using the small window that's left for Ghanaians by the Minerals and Mining Act, Act 703, and its various amendments. And what the small scale miner seeks to do is to create employment. I'm talking about the licensed small scale miners, create employment, promote responsible mining, contribute to the socioeconomic development of this country, and then boost the economy of the mining communities in which they operate. This is the mantra of the small-scale miner. But the Kufuado-led administration did not place embargo on small-scale mining in Ghana without providing an alternative. The community mining project is supposed to be a refined, regulated, and one that meets the global standard of mining in safe environment. Except, there is no difference between the new model and what it is expected to replace. 2006, they yeah, started Galamziwa. Yeah, yeah, started Yache. So what is the difference between the community mining and Galamse? Okay. Because you call my site on me community mining and galamse na yeah no. Uh yeah no correct. Community mining no uh galamse no and one uh probation is easy I uh uh galamse no is easy I have probation I I say you are dressing I know community mining. Because the emphasis is that time of uh, first and then can be be Kobe. This year, this year, friend is happy. Sana, we are community man and now we. Government of Ghana and the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources in the project appraisal and implementation document, which is to oversee the implementation of the multi-sectoral mining integrated project, has among the objectives to strengthen the socio-economic capacity of mining communities, improve environmental and health conditions in mining communities apply appropriate technology like drones in monitoring the activities of artisanal small-scale miners, among others. Industry watchers believe the MMIP is a fine document that if followed through could bring sanity in the mining sector. The Lands and Natural Resources Minister Kweku Asumachreme has had cause to pay an announced visit to areas that have become safe havens for illegal miners who continue to defy the law and mine with impunity in forest reserves and in some cases right by the shoulders of roads like these illegal miners who were seen undertaking the activity in Prestia. You see there is one excavator. Sorry. Today too. There is one esca <laughs> excavator in the you will know for. Yes, in the open pit. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they saw us, they fled. Yeah. It means that when we leave here, they will come back and work. So the action that we have to take here will have to be immediate. Mm -hmm. You see how they have devastated the forest. And it is not only this area. As we are being told, there are other areas of this forest. And, and just to cut you, we, we can hear a sound in the background. We are told this is Chamfine machine operating 
on the river. Has this come as a shock to you, considering the fact that we've fought illegal mining for close to three years now, since President Kufado took over? I've always been telling you journalists that as we close one avenue today, they open another. For we are not regular on the ground. So if we should sack them from Bekwai, they move to Apamprama. If we sack them from Apamprama, then they move to Aparapi. That's what they do. The situation appears to be taking a nosedive, partly because the military personnel who were stationed in the bushes to drive out the illegal miners have since March 2020 been withdrawn by the administration from all their bases and replaced with a standby force. But the Operation Vanguard team is not happy about how government has stopped their operations. A highly placed source with the Operation Vanguard who spoke with me on the condition of anonymity for fear of being victimized. Thank you for joining us, uh, Commander. I just want to quickly find out from you, did, did you see this truncation of your operations in the rivers and the forest reserve coming? And how did your members take this, I mean, decision by government to truncate the activities of, of Operation Vanguard? Well, thank you for having me. Um, for me, I think the, the first mistake in this fight was the early lift of the bar. You can easily correlate it with the steady increase in water activity levels. Now, then from last October, we started seeing the brazen nature of perpetrators as we age towards the election season. So this decision by government to truncate your operations in the rivers and the forest reserve, how would you say that affected the whole battle against the illegality that is causing so much devastation to our forest and water reserves? Well, that's very interesting. You see, as the year opened, a section of the powers that be um, thought the impact of the military was quite a number mm. towards their interests. So they sought to uh, um, vilify the military. Otherwise, why do we do joint operations where we fail or succeed? And yet, some people uh, thought, let's blame the military and get them out. That was a, a decision by government, and, and that is what we are faced with today. But tell me, now we, we have a standby force that have been put together to move in as and when there is a detection of illegality by galamsias going on in bushes and water bodies and all of that. How successful would this standby operation of police personnel be in the fight against the illegality? Do you think, from where you sit as a commander, that the police or this standby force that have been created they have what it takes to, to win this fight for the country as the president has even put his presidency on the line. I think we need not to bastardize any institution, especially uh, our security forces, because we work as a collective team and ensure the safety of this country. So I strongly believe that the, the police have what it takes to continue the fight. Uh, it is theirs to prove naysayers wrong. Uh, uh, for those who are casting doubt on their credibility, of course, uh, it, it will be the sole mandate of the Ghana Police Service uh, to prove that critics are wrong. And, and for me, I strongly believe that uh, they have what it takes to continue the fight. The police have no choice. They have to win this battle for the general good of the Ghanaian people. But beyond the operations of the police, how can Ghana permanently fix the illegality in the mining sector, a phenomenon that has become an albatross for the nation? Allocate areas where mining can be done and allocate areas where mining cannot be done, but other economic activities are permissible. So for instance, we need to be, have areas that are designated as agricultural lands. So no matter what we find there, Forest, reserve. forest reserves. But, Mantia, the argument has also been that people are hungry. You have these resources in the belly of the earth. People are going hungry. 
Why don't we dig it? Let's consume that. Tomorrow will take care of itself. So you are hungry today. You dig everywhere, pollute all your waters and die tomorrow because you can't get clean water. What have you achieved? So a lot of the times the concept that underpins the mining industry worldwide is sustainability. So it's not like digging everywhere for anything because I am hungry today, but ensuring human sustainability beyond the extraction of the mineral. And that means that everything you do must be carefully guided. Everything you do must be regulated. You cannot dig and encumber our, our food security, for instance. So even as you dig, we need to be um, conscious of the fact that we need land for food. And therefore, there are certain areas which are no-go areas. We need water to drink. And so there are certain areas that are no go areas, especially if they would, exactly, the forest areas and all that kind of, uh, those strategic um, 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 parts of our landmass must be protected within the broader regulation of the mining activity. As at August 2020, more than three years after launching the war against Galamse, illegal miners continue to undertake speculative mining on rivers and in forest reserves leaving uncovered pits, which serves as death traps, sending the innocent and some illegal miners to their early graves. The multi-sectoral mining integrated project document has many fine proposals, but until government finds a practical approach to implement these proposals, the hard work of the Joint Police Kum Military Tax Force, which was abruptly truncated, would be for nothing and the illegal miners will even grow in confidence and perpetrate the illegality with impunity, as is already unfolding in some mining communities. Nane Kufado's government has won a few of the wars in this campaign against illegal mining, but it appears to have lost the battle. Maybe a case of good intentions with a blunt strategy.